Okay, I'm going to do a bit of a playthrough of the game Caesar's War, which is a mini game from Decision Games. Came out in uh, 2012. Uh, now it's a very simple game, not complicated at all. Just several pages of rules. Uh, a word of caution, though, because I've played several solitaire games now, and there are very wide swings of luck depending on the dice and the cards. And you pretty well have to use the supply rules to uh, simulate this campaign at all. So keep that in mind while watching the playthrough. You always have to keep supply in mind, uh, although it is an optional rule. I think it should have been put into the body of the uh, rules. You just have to play with the supply rules in this game, or else you're not going to be simulating anything. I found that if you don't use the supply rules, Caesar can just kind of make these massive stacks and just bulldoze through everything. So um, what I'll do is I'll shoot a video after each turn and we'll see how the game goes. Just keeping in mind that depending on card draw and the dice uh, in this game, there can be very wide swings of luck. Uh, actually in one practice game I had Caesar killed on turn one, which was a little weird. And in another game, I had the Romans win by turn four. So um, we'll have to be aware of that. Anyway, let's start the replay. Okay, well, we have to define the setup because there are some variables in the setup. I'm starting Caesar himself here in Cisalpine Gaul with uh, the 10th Legion, which is that elite legion, the Auxiliary Cavalry, and another legion. <clears throat> I've got Labinius here at Massilia with one legion and another legion at Narbo Martius. Now the objective for the Romans is to capture four barbarian fortresses. You see some of them there. And uh, the Helvetii start here in a fortress. And the Romans begin the game by drawing a card and doing their move. Now unfortunately the barbarians have... Uh, a card already selected for them when they move. Now historically the Helvetii were moving to the west and Caesar intercepted them. Now in the game, since Caesar moves first, he can certainly intercept them here at Allobroges. And uh, well, let's see what the uh, Caesar uh, Roman player draws and uh, we'll do turn one. Okay, the Romans drew this sieges card which allowed them to um, recruit another legion at uh, Cisalpine Gaul, and leaders can move two, legions move two, and the auxiliary cavalry can move three. If they had a fleet, they could have uh, moved at one. So Caesar decided to move two legions, two Helvetii in attack, and Labienus moved two legions to Gregoria to attack. Uh, we have to watch the stacking here. If you overstack two units, you are subject to severe attrition. So using economy of force, the Romans have attacked the Helvetii and Gergovia. Let's catch the action after the combats. Doesn't look too favorable for the barbarians at this point. Okay, this is the situation after combat. There were a couple of unexpected results. One thing the Romans had with this card, the siege card, was that units defending in fortresses this time were affected by panic results. So, um, Labienus was able to destroy the garrison at Gergovia, but uh, they put up a good defense, and actually they cost the Romans one legion. Now, for the Helvetii, Caesar was able to destroy the Helvetii. He panicked them first, but the rules indicate that the Helvetii cannot retreat across a major river without a leader, so the Helvetii were destroyed. So the Romans are off to a fairly good start. Uh, they've eliminated the Helvetii, captured Gergovia, but they have lost one legion. Let's see what the Barbarians can do. Now, keeping in mind that the Barbarian uh, first card, I don't like this rule to tell you the truth, is the, uh, they already have selected the Helvetia card. They have to use that card, and in this case, the card is completely useless since the Helvetii are destroyed. So, um, I don't think the Barbarians can do anything on turn one. Um, I kind of don't like that at all to tell you the truth. It just seems a little silly. Isn't the optimum move for Caesar to always destroy the Helvetii? I might not be seeing something, but that's what the rules say. Um, so we'll go on to turn two, see what happens. 
Well, I don't see how the Barbarians can move on turn one, because the Helveti card is um, quite specific. Only the Helvetians can move, so uh, the Barbarians forfeit the first move, and we'll move on to um, turn two. And we'll see what the Romans draw. Well, the Roman luck prevails. Caesar's luck, you might call it, or the will of the gods. The Romans pull the Del Bello Gallico card, which is pretty nice. They can recruit three leaders, legions, auxiliaries, garrisons, or fleets. Leaders can move five, legions three, auxiliaries four. And if they had fleets, they could move. So um, the Romans are going to be able to do a lot this turn. Let's see what they do with their move. Okay, with that result, I was able to do some very bold moves with Caesar's legions. I moved Labienus and Legion way up here to the Sequani. I moved a Legion and the Auxiliary Cavalry here to Auxilidunum. Two Legions here at Gregovia. And Caesar himself countermarched to Avaricum, where he'll now lay siege to the city with uh, the 10th Legion. Again, it's not looking too well for the Barbarians here. Let's see what happens after the siege at Avaricum. Well, as I suspected, Avaricum fell like a house of cards. Um, they didn't have a chance against Caesar. And, uh, well, that's that. I'm just finding the game so far, turns one and two, just a Roman cakewalk. There's just nothing that can stop them. And the barbarian response is kind of, um, well, I don't even know what they can do on turn one. If the Helvetians are taken, they can't even move on turn one. So I think some of the concerns on Board Game Geek about the Helveti card or the Barbarians not moving first or starting Vercingetorix on the map are valid concerns. I've played, uh, what, five games of this now and haven't had Vercingetorix appear once. But let's see what the Barbarians can do on turn two. What card did they draw? Okay, finally some good luck for the Barbarians. This is the first time I've seen this card in all my playtesting. The uh, Barbarians drew the Gallic Tribe uh, Rises, which means they can uh, recruit now heavily. And I've chosen to bring on uh, two Celt units. Versus Jedrick himself arrived here at Elysia. So um, now we've got a game, and let's see what the Barbarians can do in their move, or what they should do. Not sure what their options are. Let's take a look. Okay, just to show that it isn't always the Roman way, Vercingetorix is going to, since he can move three, he's going to move the two Celt units down this way to counterattack Gergovia, hitting the two legions there. So this seems like a good counter move. He can take a fortress back and perhaps destroy two legions. So we have a very critical battle occurring here at Gergovia. Let's see how the Barbarians fare out. Okay. Vercingetorix was able to win the battle at Gergovia, destroying one legion. So we've got a game on the go now. I was a little bit concerned there. My other games weren't going this way. This one looks like it's going to be pretty good. So we're going to be on to 57 BC, turn one. Let's see what the Roman response will be. Okay, the uh, Romans drew the Legions on the March card, and I've been very careful about watching the stacking. You certainly don't want to go over those stacking limits and start paying attrition costs. So the Romans did a kind of a conservative move. They decided to build a Roman camp here under these two legions at Allobroges, and Caesar himself built a camp here at Avaricum. That's going to allow them to besiege Gergovia later on if... Person Jetterick stick, uh, sticks around. And um, I recall Labienus from the Sequani up here, and he moved down to Uxaladunum. So uh, a period of retrenchment a bit for the Romans. So we certainly have a game going on here. What's the barbarian response? Now the barbarians didn't draw a great card. They got the Veneti Raiders, which means they can... Um, recruit a Celtic fleet, which uh, I've done so. I've, I've um, put it on the board here at uh, the Veneti space in the northwest. So, Vercingetorix can't do anything this turn. 
He's still in Gergovia. He's fine there, but he's kind of surrounded by Romans almost. So uh, the barbarians didn't do much that turn. So we're on to 57 BC, the second turn. See what the Romans can do. Well, the gods are not um, waxing favorites on the Romans this turn. The Romans uh, draw this unrest in the Roman ranks. Um, so I'm going to have to roll for each of the Roman hexes here, squares, to see if they lose any units. Now the card specifically says that units uh, stacked with leaders are exempt and in Roman fortresses. I'm not sure if that means Roman camps too. I'm going to assume it does not because a camp is not a fortress. So I'll do some rolls here and um, see if the Romans lose any troops. Well, uh, building those Roman camps might have paid off. Of course, it didn't help that Vercingetorix couldn't move. But uh, the Romans are now going to lay siege to Gergovia, and they're able to hit them really from three sides. Caesar can bring a legion out from Avaricum. A legion can come out from Allobroges, and another legion from uh, Uxaladunum. And uh, laying siege to a fortress means that the panic results... Um, well, the barbarians are not invulnerable to the panic results. So I think Vercingetorix's uh, goose may be cooked here unless they get some good dice. Let's see what happens after the siege at Gergovia. Okay, as I suspected, um, Vercingetorix didn't get out of that one alive. Uh, Caesar took Gergovia with no losses at all. So the heart of the rebellion has certainly been smashed. Vercingetorix is dead, and all the Romans have to do is occupy four um, fortresses to win the game. So uh, let's see what the barbarians can do. Doesn't look good. Well, the barbarians are going to go down fighting, that's for sure. They got a good card. Gallic tribe rises. Vercing uh, Vercingetorix is dead, so they can choose um, a tribe to recruit, and they're going to choose the Belgae. So I'm going to bring on a new Belgae unit up there. And now we've got some teeth to the barbarian forces. They'll probably move down to Elysia to uh, guard that last fort. Okay, that's the situation after the um, barbarians have moved. They moved uh, large forces down here to um, Elysia. And uh, forces from up Atuatica came down to Lutetia. So they're gathering for a defense of Elysia. And depending on what the Romans get, maybe the barbarians will be able to do a counterattack. See what the Romans are up to. Okay, I momentarily forgot about the supply rules there for Caesar's overstacked set of units at Gergovia, but I rolled for them and uh, Caesar's luck was with him. He didn't lose any men at all. So I had Caesar's army moved up to Avaricum and on to Elysia for the big one. So. This could be the game right here if Caesar takes Elysia. Kind of uh, significant that the final battle take place there. Anyway, let's see what happens after we resolve the battle at Elysia. Okay, I suspected that Caesar would win that battle, and he did. He won the battle at Elysia, driving off the Belgae, taking some losses though. Now with his 10th legion here, that's an elite unit. It's a tough nut to crack. So Caesar did take Elysia. And now we find ourselves with the Romans occupying four of the fortresses. And um, Vercingetorix is not on the board. Now if I read the rules right, the Romans have won the game if they begin the turn in possession of those four fortresses. So it'll be up to the barbarians. If they can't take one of these fortresses back, the Romans will have won the game. Let's see what they can do. Well, the barbarians drew a nice card, which they can recruit uh, four units, and uh, each of the units is going to be able to move three. So Caesar might have his four fortifications, but he might not be able to hold them because the barbarians are going to have to strike back now in earnest. And uh, let's see what they can do. They're going to try to savagely strike the Romans if they can. Well, there was only one place the barbarians could counterattack, and that was at Elysia. And they've brought overwhelming force against Caesar. So this is going to be one interesting battle. Caesar with an elite 10th legion against five barbarian units. 
I think Caesar's going to get defeated this time, but uh, let's see how it goes. Okay, Caesar was defeated. Um, he had to retreat, and he's back at Avaricum. With Caesar pushed out of Elysia, the Romans are going to have their work cut out for them, that's for sure. So they drew this uh, legions on the march, which means they can recruit a legion. And um, Caesar decided to put the legion under him at Avaricum. He can do so because the Roman camp is there. Caesar is also allowed to recruit one legion per turn too, so he was able to replenish the losses from Elysia. But uh, let's look at his strategic options and see how the Romans are going to win this thing. Well, Caesar decides to go at the uh, barbarian forces at Elysia again, and he's going to go in with three legions, and he's adjusted his legions to occupy all of the fortresses. So if he drives the barbarians out and uh, they can't take it back, he'll have won the game. But he's going to have his work cut out for him. This is quite a large barbarian force. And let's see if uh, Caesar can pull it off. Well, Caesar was able to pull it off, although he took a lot of losses in doing so. He's left with one legion left, um, the good old 10th, which is his elite legion. So once again, the, the Romans find themselves in command of... Um, whoops, I accidentally bumped a unit here. They're um, in command of the four fortresses. So the uh, barbarians will have one chance to take a fortress back, and if they can't, the Romans will have won the game. Let's see what the Barbarians can do. Okay, the Barbarians um, draw a an appropriate card. The tribes go home, which is not very good. There's very, uh, virtually no Barbarian units on the board, and uh, this card just might be the coup de grace. Let's see what uh, occurs after we implement the results of that card. Well, the Barbarians didn't lose any units, but... Um, They've lost the game. And the turn record is on what? One, two, three, four, five. Turn six, 56 BC, the second turn. And the Romans under Julius Caesar have won the game. They've got their four fortresses. Vercingetorix is not on the board. So um, I'll do a little summary of the game and uh, give you some opinions on it. Okay, in summary, uh, Caesar's War is a very simple game. Very simple, very light. Heck, you can play it in less than an hour. Um, I, th I think I've got some concerns about the opening. I don't like that Helvetti card being locked in for the Barbarians. I'm not sure if I like Caesar moving first on turn one. Uh, the optimum play seems to be to knock out the Helvetti, but, uh, well, that's just a design decision that the designer made. So, um... That's my only main concern. It is a simple game, so we're talking dice rolls are going to really sway the results and what cards you get. The cards got uh, the cards are neat, you know. They are uh, they're small, but um, they're nice looking. Um, I wish the pieces were the five eighths inch uh, pieces. The half inch are getting small for these old eyes of mine, but I like the uh, the board and um, I don't know if I had known. Um, uh, what this game is like before I bought it, would I still buy it? Yeah, I would. I would. It's a simple game, a lot of fun to play. So that's my uh, summation of Caesar's War um, by Decision Games, printed in 2012. And a nice little game on Caesar's Gallic War. Thank you for watching.